throughout the history as animals spread across the world infectious agents have been constant companions among infectious companions virus carries very few things but it always carries its genetic blueprints researchers call it surprisingly very intelligent creature it steals or hijacks biosynthetic machinery of the host to build whatever it needs same machinery researchers tricked this time to build rna vaccine against the virus so this is the subject of my talk today for two decades i have been involved in genetic manipulations of the smallest particle like virus to complex structure of the known universe like brain currently i am using adenovirus to deliver rna to build a protein in brain that we think has the potential to rewire the brain circuits so this same principle and virus have been used to develop rna vaccines against coronavirus so the coronavirus comes from a huge family of viruses that is not new to this world in 1920s scientists first identified avian coronavirus that causes infectious bronchitis in poultry in 1965 first human coronavirus wa- causing the cold was identified and was reported in nature in 1967 so these viruses were named after their crown like shape as of today 45 species of coronavirus are officially recognized there are seven coronavirus that can infect humans all are from animal origin but three were found deadly the one that caused middle east respiratory syndrome mers was identified in 2012 in saudi arabia it is believed it jumped from bats to camels to human 35% of the patients with mers died sars cov 1 that caused sudden acute respiratory syndrome was identified in 2002 as of 2020 sars cov 1 is considered eradicated in humans but as the virus also infects animals it is possible that it will reemerge in the future in december 2019 another strain of sars cov was identified in china as sars cov 2 this new strain that causes covid 19 believed to be jumped from bats to pangolin to human SARS-CoV-3 is a single stranded RNA virus that has 79% homology with SARS-CoV-1 and 96% homology with the coronavirus strain rad G13 originally found in bat however unlike the bat virus human coronavirus has a spike protein optimized for high affinity binding to human receptor and angiotensin converting enzyme shortly we can say it ace2 receptor so this optimization assisted sars cov2 to infect human and scientists suggest that this optimization was acquired due to recombination within its intermediate host Using optimized spike protein coronavirus attaches to the host cell expressing ACE2 at first its spike protein binds to receptor through S1 fuses through S2 domain and enters into cytosol then faces lysosome that removes its protective coating and releases its RNA that is taken up by host ribosome for translation So first 20 kb of its rna is translated into rna dependent rna polymerase that with the help of host ribosome build whatever it needs its positive strain generates protein like spike protein nucleocapsid membrane proteins and velop proteins so these newly synthesized proteins by host ribosome then assemble to generate new viral particles that invade other cells through exocytosis 
or cell apoptosis. So the each infected cell can on average produce 100 to 1000 new viral particles per day. This unhealthy relationship turns into death of host cell. And this cell is actually imaged by scanning electron microscope at National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, Maryland, USA. So blue colored is the cell died because of overload of yellow colored white uh, so viral particles. A complete viral genome is 30 KB that is smaller than a single human gene. So this small genome hardly supports few things. That's why virus lacks proofreading system, a system that does not allow any error in genome replication. So in other words, a virus is by default prone to genetic variations. So this figure shows published in Nature a month after the outbreak, dozens of corona variants. Another figure generated in fall of 2020 shows hundreds of variants across the globe. These studies show how quick this virus mutates to adapt for its existence. Researchers got worried when they found unusual pattern of variations. During last couple of months, three super corona variants were emerged with several unique variations. That's not normal. These mutations not only further optimized spike protein, but also challenged immune protection. So these super corona variants are known as UK, South Africa, and Brazilian variants. In January 2021, scientists from UK reported an evidence that suggests B117 variant may be associated with an increased risk of death compared with other variants. UK variant or B117 was the first super corona variant that emerged with several unique mutations. So multiple variation within spike protein of virus has enhanced its interaction with ACE2 receptor that help facilitate warm welcome by host. A team at Imperial College London estimated that the variant has an increased transmission rate of 70% compared with other variants. South African variant or B1351 was emerged independent of UK variant and this variant shares some mutations with UK variant. It carries a newer mutation called E484K among others. Professor Frankis from University College London said that E484K mutation has been shown to reduce antibody recognition. So this mutation helps the virus to bypass immune protection provided by prior infection or vaccination. Brazilian variant is highly contagious like UK variant and it also carries E484K mutation that evades some of natural immune responses. So this variant has 17 unique mutations, including three in the receptor binding domain of the spike protein. Both vaccination and natural infection produce a polyclonal response that targets several parts of spike protein. The growing concern is that the virus would likely need to accumulate multiple mutations in the spike protein to evade immunity induced by vaccine or by prior infection. Early results from Moderna companies suggest its vaccine is still effective against South African variant, although the immune response may not be as strong or prolonged. So despite the viral ability to mutate and evade immunity, we have the edge to tweak new generation vaccine, a revolutionary vaccine, the RNA vaccine. So the idea of RNA vaccine is 30 years old even technology is not entirely new. 
Since 2011, cancer research has been using RNA technology to trigger immune system to target specific cancer cells. So this 2019 Nature article highlights the importance of RNA vaccine technology. Well before outbreak of COVID-19, I have been using RNA technology to rewire the brain circuits by expressing a protein that we think have the potential to rewire the brain circuits. So this figure shows the presence of adeno-associated virus expressing red fluorescent protein in addition to protein of our interest. So this work has therapeutic value in autism spectrum disorder, a genetic disorder that severely impairs brain circuits. If we look at the vaccine's history, 200 years ago, weak pathogens of smallpox were used to trigger immune response. 125 years ago, the plaque vaccine was prepared by inactivated pathogen. And then 35 years ago, using a recombinant technology, an individual protein or antigen of hepatitis B virus was used to trigger a similar response. So instead of delivering a virus or a viral protein, RNA vaccine delivered genetic information that allows the body's own cells to produce a viral protein itself, which in turn triggers an immune response. Targeting spike protein is the strategy adapted by most of the companies. As we learned that the coronavirus is a single-stranded RNA virus, that delivers its positive sense RNA into host cell. Scientist has figured out the sequence of the RNA that encodes the viral spike protein. This subgenomic RNA is the key in vaccine production. Since the sequence resembles to messenger RNA, so it is known as mRNA vaccine. So to deliver RNA vaccine, companies like Chinese company CanSino Biological used non-replicating adeno-associated virus that can infect human cell without causing disease. Pfizer and Moderna vaccines use lipid nanoparticles to deliver RNA vaccine. So once injected into body, nanoparticles can release RNA into host cells where this RNA is translated as spike protein. So these newly synthesized spike proteins by host cells then release from cells and trigger immune response. Our immune system, our defense system contains variety of white blood cells like B cells, T cells, macrophages, and dendritic cells. So dendritic cells are known as antigen presenting cells. So antigen presenting cells once recognize spike protein generated through RNA vaccine they transfer information to B cells that can produce memory B cells and antibodies against the spike protein. So in case of actual infection, these memory B cells are activated to ramp up the production of antibodies. And these antibodies specific to spike protein then physically block the spike protein of actual virus and mark the virus for destruction by other immune cells. So reported efficacy of the RNA vaccine is up to 95% that is based on number of infected individuals from vaccine group versus placebo group that develop same disease. So the question is which RNA delivery system works better? Adeno associated virus or AAVs are recombinant viruses that can infect human cells but they don't replicate inside the host cells as replicates and capsid genes that support replications are deleted in these viruses. However, they keep generating copies of RNA for longer time <clears throat> without destruction of the host cells. That's why the only one shot of viral mediated vaccine is good enough. So in nature, there are dozens of AAVs type 2, 3, 5, 6 are human AAVs and Chinese company used AAV5 and AstraZeneca used actually the chimpanzee AAV 
So on the other hand, the lipid nanoparticles are safe and effective to deliver RNA as compared to the AAVs. But this requires extremely low temperature for storage and transportation. So once RNA is released inside the host cell, it is translated into spike protein. Free DNA does not stay longer. That's why we need two shots for the vaccine that are lipid nanoparticles based. Here is the list of all vaccines that passed clinical trial three. This list is adapted from WHO site that shows 173 vaccines under different trials. If we look at this slide, there are 14 vaccines available for public. Seven out of 14 are RNA based. Pfizer, Moderna, CureVac, they use lipid nanoparticle system and other four are viral mediated. So two companies prepared the protein based using recombinant technology while the five companies they preferred conventional method of inactivated virus as a vaccine. So the vaccine we received recently from Chinese company Sinopharm is based on inactivated virus. So Kazakhstan and Indian company also used uh, this approach that doesn't require high-tech skills as we need in RNA or recombinant vaccines. So overall, China is leading in vaccine development. They have produced all three types, like conventional one, recombinant, and RNA vaccines. So one big advantage of RNA vaccine is that many different variants of RNA can be delivered like UK, South Africa, Brazilian variants to trigger the immune response against these variants. And other advantage is that in case of new mutations, RNA vaccine can be updated using genetic engineering. So there is a growing concern that RNA vaccine might alter someone's DNA. So this idea has no scientific basis because RNA never enters into nucleus. In fact, it degrades quickly. So therefore, the people need two injections of lipid nanoparticles based RNA vaccine to develop the best immune responses. In a recent study conducted at the University of Washington, published in Nature Medicine, showed that the spike protein of the virus can cross the blood brain barrier in mice. So that's the concern because the spike protein produced through RNA vaccine or injected as protein alone can cause brain fog that causes trouble in clear thinking. That is one of the symptoms reported in COVID patients. So it's well established that coronavirus has short and long-term effects on respiratory system. However, recent studies show that it also has short and long-term effects on brain. So loss of smell or uh, anosmia is one of the earliest and commonly reported neurological symptom of COVID-19. So the novel coronavirus likely changes the sense of smell. If we look at the anatomy, the olfactory bulb or the olfactory system, the neurons are exposed at first in the nasal cavity. So SARS-CoV-2 virus seems to affect, be affecting these nerves that carry the information from nose to the brain. A study published in Nature Neuroscience in November 2020 reported presence of virus in olfactory bulb. So this study suggests that the coronavirus infects sporting cells, leaving the neurons vulnerable and deprived of nutrients. So the first symptoms might be the loss of smell and taste in most of the pupil, but some of the patients may later battle headaches, fatigue, and trouble thinking clearly referred to as brain fog. So researchers are wondering how exactly the coronavirus affects human brain. So recent paper published from US in New England Journal of Medicine reported microvascular injury of brain stem 
which regulates breathing and heart rate. Indeed, the MRI images revealed an unusual number of bright spots, a sign of inflammation. They also showed the dark spots, which indicate bleeding. A closer look at the bright spots showed that tiny blood vessels in those areas were thinner than the normal and in some cases blood was leaked into the brain. So they do see neurophagia, however they could not find any evidence of the virus in the brain. That further validates the virus welcoming receptor ACE2 does not exist in neurons. So COVID-19 results in high levels of pro-inflammatory cytokines, acute respiratory distress and hypoxia. So each of which can contribute to cognitive decline, both in healthy and in early predisposed individuals. So multiple lines <clears throat> of evidence suggest that the viral infections appear to produce brain related symptoms ranging from seizures to psychosis. A recent publication in Journal of Alzheimer and Dementia reports that severe COVID-19 may even increase a person's risk of developing Alzheimer. So this needs to be studied more. So throughout the history, our existence was challenged by invisible companions. Here is the overview of history's most deadly pandemics. So the Black Death caused by bacterium pestis originated in rats and spread to humans via fleas. So the outbreak <clears throat> wiped out 30 to 50 percent of Europeans population in five years. So it took more than 200 years for the continent's population to recover. Smallpox killed 90 percent of Native Americans. It is believed to have arrived through Spanish ship sailing from Cuba carrying African slaves. So the Spanish flu caused by H1N1 influenza virus infected one third of the world's population and killed 50 million in one year. Bacterium pestis also struck at the time of Roman Emperor Justinian 30 years before the birth of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and killed one fourth of the world population at that time. So COVID-19 caused by novel coronavirus has infected 1.3% world population and killed 2 million in one year, that is 0.03%. So this pandemic is relatively less fatal though it's number five as compared to others. So one reason could be scientific advancements. In few months, researchers were able to fully understand viral genetics, structural biology, pathophysiology that all ramped up the development of vaccine across the globe. At the end of March 2020, there were hundreds of vaccines ready for preclinical trials. So the geneticists believe that SARS-CoV-2 will probably mutate more into a strain that would fit to coexist peacefully with the host and would remain our companion for years like flu. And I agree with that. If you would like to see my detailed overseas PTV interview on super corona variants and another on RNA vaccine, please visit my YouTube channel DNA Affairs. So DNA Affairs is an educational channel to serve the mission of my life that is to provide genetic counseling and screening to help eradicate genetic defects in my homeland. Experts estimate that 29 million people out of Pakistan, 200 million population suffer from genetic defects. That means every seventh person is affected by genetic defect. Worldwide, Pakistan is second highest in genetic disorders. So that's why it is so important that we take a more proactive role in getting to understand genetics. I also have a genetic defect in my cartilages. Because of this, I have serious mobility issues. 
as a geneticist and victim of one of the genetic disorders, I have devoted myself for public awareness. TNA Fair is a part of that campaign. So I would request you to join this campaign as an expert, counselor, volunteer, motivator or donor to help eradicate genetic defects. So the future of health is personalized or precision medicine, an approach to select treatments that are mostly likely to help patients based on a genetic understanding of their diseases. Thanks a lot for giving me an opportunity and listening my talk.